Hello everybody and welcome back to another law novel review thing with me, the Border Prince. So today we're going to be talking about Magnus the Red, the Master of Prospero, which is the third book in the Primarch series. And yeah, if you've listened to Move Ones, you probably know what to expect from these novels now. It's again a sort of a prequel thing set during the Great Crusade. And Magnus is one of the most enigmatic characters in the series. If you know, uh, spoilers ahead, if you know what uh, happens, you know, in the Imperial throne room and everything, if you're up to date on your heresy, you know he's the one who got shot on the most. So I have sympathy for him because his heart was in the right place. But the, uh, the machinations of Zench really, really worked on him, it seems. <laughs> so what does this book involve? It's a story which is interesting really it's not an all-out conflict that we're involved in here basically there's a world and it's suffering a collapse basically it's a dying planet and magnus is there along with perturaba and the iron warriors and they are trying to save as many of the population as possible now this is uh recently after the thousand sons have been rejoined with magnus so they're still under strength because of the curse that they were under. It was afflicting them massively. And yeah, it's it's a really interesting little exploration of the character of Magnus. But again, it's very odd. It's not what you would expect it to be. Most of it, a good chunk of it, is covering the Iron Warriors, which is interesting. And the next novel that I'm going to read is the Perturabo one. So I mean, I'll be interested to see whether that solely concerns Perturabo or whether it's going to be someone else involved there. The Gilliman one was just about Gilliman and sort of the Ultramarines. But the Space Wolf one was mostly about the Space Wolf. It was covering the, the, the origins of the conflict between the Wolf and the Lion and everything that's happened with that then between the two chapters, between the two legions going forward. So this was an interesting one. Basically, I mean, to cut a long story short, I suppose I'll just sort of give you the rough outline. There is... Oh, how would I even begin? <laughs> okay, so... What should we say? There's, um, oh, I don't even know where to begin this. Right. The planet they're on joined with the Imperium. They embraced the Imperium. They loved it. It was great. Unfortunately, this population are the descendants of, um, the original, well, the, they're the descendants of the original colonists, obviously. Unfortunately, the original colonists went about before the coming of Old Night, where you know, psychers went rampant and almost destroyed human civilization and the, the dark time came. They purged their population of psychers using, you know, not very nice methods, basically. And they did this within their original colony ship, which is buried underground. And interesting, little snippets of like Terran history, uh, sort of Unification Wars history here. This ship came from what appears to have been China now. And it's got all the symbols on there and stuff. And it seems to be, yeah, it flew across space with, you know, tens of thousands of people on board, colonists, and landed on this planet. And while they were there, the same thing happened to them as happened to everybody else. Human civilization, human human uh, humanity was evolving too quickly. And unlike other worlds which didn't do anything or, or embrace these new psychers that were coming up through the, the population or didn't do anything about them before it was too late. These guys did. They, they purged their population. They cut, them, they cut the psycho powers out of them, whether that killed them or whether it seems to have kept them in sort of stasis tubes or something like that. That's, that's how it appears to be. But basically, the, this, all this psycho energy, all these souls of these psychers stuck around and sort of formed this... Gast, sort of a gestalt intelligence fused them all together and they they feel anger they feel resentment they want to inflict pain on others but they were sealed away under this in this in this colony ship and the ship was warded and it was left forgotten but this left a mark on the colonists who had done this to their fellow men women and children uh, their fellow citizens their fellow colonists and these, these, like I say, men, women, and children, it was men, women, and when, bleh, bleh, men, women, and children. They did this to them all. And it was pretty brutal, you know, scalpels and bloody chaining people to, 
tables and yeah, it's grim as fuck. It's grim as fuck. And basically, yeah, it left uh, the power of the of this entity that came into being affected those ones, the the, the non psycho people who fled the ship, and it created within them a sort of a, a religious sensibility and a it prophesized the end times for their planet. And basically, for the looks of it, when they joined with the Imperium, it seems they were siphoning off resources to create a a uh, a, a machine, a weapon, a vast machine, a vast weapon that would destroy their planet. And so, due to them, what happened to every other human, well, most other human uh, planets, and uh, destroy them in the same way, in the, in the way of old night. And that's what happened, really. They're trying to stop people from leaving the planet. They're the uh, the, the sons of Shaitan. I think that's what it's. I think that's what it's. They're called. But anyway, they're um, they're you know killing other civilians to stop them leaving. They're attacking the uh, the these who are supposedly loyal people are attacking the evacuation forces. You know, shooting down ships. This is where Magnus gets uh, his his nickname. This is where it comes from because he, he uses his psychic powers to stop a giant fucking ship, a giant cruiser, which has been landing on the planet and stock full of people to be rescued and sent them up. And as it's lifting off, it's attacked by um, traitor uh, fighters and shot down. And he manages to stop it from falling. Um, and most of the people in there survive, you know. And sort of this spreads around the Crusader fleets of the two combined legions, and you know later on would spread throughout the rest of the Crusade. So it's a really bizarre story. Um, it's very strange. It's a nice story. I did like the the different the change of tone, the change of story, but it's an interesting plot. It's something you wouldn't normally expect from uh, the her- Heresy or from Forty K. Uh, yeah, they're on a mission of mercy, and yet all this creepy shit happens, and. Uh, yeah, we see some awesome bits with, you know, Magnus, uh, for instance, he just, very much like Magneto, he pulls a tank apart <laughs> and then uh, crushes the driver's neck when it's attacking them. Um, we get some nice bits with Araman having some uh, some visions of the future when he's doing stuff, uh, which sort of hint at the future conflict to come, the heresy and afterwards. Uh, we get some nice bits with Perturabo and his boys. Ferex, Ferex, I think it's Ferex, who's a character that will go on. Uh, yeah, it's it's a good little book. I, I was really entertained by it. It's um, it's really interesting, and it's got snippets of all lo- little tiny different bits from all over the universe are contained in this story, and I really enjoyed it. I would definitely recommend it. it it's probably the wolf and the lion one, the Lehman Russ one, is a much more entertaining story, I think. But the Gilliman one is a bit dull, if I'm completely honest, in comparison. Um, I would say out of the three I've read now, the Wolf and the Lion one is first. This Magnus Red one is second. And the Gilliman one is third. So we'll see how the Perturabo one goes. And then we'll get on to the Lorgar one afterwards. But yeah, these are shaping up to be a nice little series. Um, I'm really interested to see what it looks like once you know we've got to the end of it. I mean, we're going to have 18 or maybe 20, if we're lucky. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's it's a good read. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else awesome that I could just mention. Oh, yeah, so the way he defeats this entity is he captures it and puts it into the book of Magnus. And how the story's structured, it starts off with, it's just after, at least from Magnus's point of view, the fall of Prospero. And he's on the planet of Sorcerers. He kind of releases this entity back out because I guess he's bored or he doesn't know what to do. And this entity's been trapped in the grimoire, um, sort of living in existence, to be honest, living the tales that are written in this book somehow. I don't know. But <laughs> he's on the planet of Sorcerer, sort of reflecting on things, you know, and they have a little, they have a couple of little discussions, little chats. Um, I really liked it. It reminded me, to be honest, it reminded me of a lot of, oh God, what's the point? What's, what's the film called? Oh God, the, with the guy from Jurassic Park. Event Horizon. It, it's, it had that feel of Event Horizon and I think it's a pretty similar story, really, in terms of sort of demonic, uh, psychic entity, uh, which is nice. You know, it, it really, it really tickled the old sci-fi, uh, 
the odd sci-fi jangles, you know? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying, but it really, it felt science fiction. It felt good, you know? It felt very, um, all these books are quite episodic and I like that. It's, uh, it's a nice little callback to a previous time and it really adds on to their characters and builds on these things. So yeah, if you've listened to it, let me know what you think. If there's anything important you think I've missed here. I've only just sort of, sort of covered this briefly. It was a good read and it was an enjoyable read. And um, again, I listened to the audiobook version and you can get an Audible subscription if you follow the links below. Hint, hint. Or if you want to pick up the hard copy, there's an Amazon link. But yeah, let me know what you think because I thought that was good. And I'll definitely, after the Gilliman one, I was a bit ropey about it. The Space Wolf one brought me back to it. This Magnus one was really interesting. So I'm hoping the Perturabo one is just as good. So, yeah, thanks for listening, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.